Have you been looking for a ergonomic vertical wireless mouse to use for gaming or for use in your everyday at the office that has RGB? Well then, you're in the right place. Hello, I am Wanderer001 and this is my review of the ProtoArc EM11 RGB wireless ergonomic vertical mouse. I will start this review off by stating that ProtoArc did reach out to me uh, and provide me with this mouse for the purposes of doing an unbiased review, so that's what you're going to get. Let's take a look at the mouse as a whole. You were looking at the top portion, which is our buttons. We're going to bring it around to the side and talk some general size specifications. First being that you are looking at 2.6 inches high at its highest point, 2.93 inches wide, again at its widest point, you can see how it flares off in the back there, with a depth of 5.72 and an overall weight of 3.8 ounces or 110 grams. Now that means it is a very light and mobile mouse for everyday use or with gaming. As mentioned before, there is an RGB strip on the top here and we're gonna zoom in a little bit so that you can see that. And the RGB lighting has four different light cues. You have this one, which is just kind of blending all the lights. Now it will pulsate each individual color. Do that again. Now it will pulsate one color at a time. And then here, it will cycle through the colors, but it'll do like this Knight Rider thing. Thusly, when we are talking about the LEDs on the top, there are some things that I wanted to mention. There is a little light bleed through the patch right back here. Uh, if I hold it like this, you can see there's a little light bleed there. Uh, that's gonna come into play a little later. I wanna talk about that. And then right here for the buttons, uh, might be a little difficult to see, but there is some light bleed with your forward and back buttons right there. Is it terrible? No but I just wanted to make you aware of it so that you knew that you might see a little light getting through. Now, if I stop moving the mouse for anywhere of five seconds, you'll notice that the lights will turn themselves off and that is a way to kind of preserve the battery, which is very helpful. I do kind of wish that they would allow you to pick your individual RGB settings, but I get it. For the price point of this, which we'll discuss later, you're not gonna get that kind of option. Coming around to the top or the front of the mouse, we've got our left click, our right click, as well as a scroll wheel right here, which if I scroll, it's responsive, but it does not have a free float mode where you click in and then can scroll very, very fast. However, you can click in and get, an, get a click option there. Right there, that is an LED indicator. That is going to be for your different DPIs and when the battery gets low. DPIs, they will flash once blue, twice blue, three blue for the different DPIs, or flash red when it is dying. This is also where you can look and see when it's charging, it will flash blue and stop when it's done charging. Right here, we've got our LEDs. So right over here, if I do that really quick, that button is what I was clicking to cycle through the different LED options. Me personally, I would like a different placement of this button and this LED light indicator, primarily because if I'm using this, this is how I'm using it. Notice that the LED indicator is covered up by my hand and since this is a vertical mouse, I see the top here. I was thinking this little light bleed area would be a great place to put that little LED indicator so I can see when the battery's running low because I've had this running and it just stopped working because, well, I don't notice that LED on the front. Likewise, with this indicator right here, how often are you cycling through your LEDs? I know once I get to a setting that I like, I just kind of leave it there. Granted, if I press and hold on it, it will turn off the LEDs like that, and then I don't have it blinking anymore. But if you're getting an RGB light, you kinda want them on. So I feel once you've cycled to the RGB setting that you'd like, perhaps the better placement for this button would have been on the bottom. And I'm going to power that off for a moment uh, so that we can talk about the bottom. Right there you can see there is your on off switch. There is your track light. Over here we have our three different settings. It comes with a transmitter or I can tap it to Bluetooth 1 or Bluetooth 2. I'm gonna quickly do that so that you can see it's on Bluetooth 1 and I can do Bluetooth 2. So you could actually pair this to a computer if it already had Bluetooth on it, or you can use the dongle and pair it that way. You can pair this to a smartphone and get a little mouse on your smartphone. That's kind of an interesting feature that this has. The transmitter kind of just slips in here and is held in place loosely 
by pressure. I have not had it fall out on me, but I haven't also been violently throwing it around. But you saw, I did give it a good shake and it doesn't go anywhere. I wish that was magnetic, but again, price point, keep that in mind. Right here, this is our DPI setting. The DPI can switch between three levels, 1,000, 1,600, and 2,400. To me, I change my DPI more than I change my LEDs. So I kind of wish this was here and this was here. Because if I want to change my mouse, DPI, I have to stop, flip it, come back. To me, I would really like it right there. It just seems better situated for the way that I use the mouse. Coming back to our bottom here, we have five glide plates, which I will admit, compared to my other work mouse over there in the corner, which is what I was using previously, these are not as big, but they offer great glide and cut down on resistance, which is really what you want for something like this. If we bring the mouse back around, you can see how this is shaped. The way that I use this, I have my two fingers right here, and then my third just kind of hangs out there, kind of clutching it like that. Ideally, you should be holding it thusly. However, I have a modified claw grip that I generally use when I'm gaming or even in the office. But the buttons are far enough back that if you hold it like I do, you'll still be able to use this. The back of it has a nice flared resting channel for your hand, and it has some grooves in there. Realistically, they add to the aesthetic of it. They don't really feel like they're doing anything for me. There is a forward and back button within quick reach of your thumb, so no problem there. There's a deep cut in between them, so you'll know exactly which button you're on. And then there's a nice resting channel for your thumb. The mouse construction itself is kind of this rubberized plastic. You will notice some grease spots have started because I have been testing this for about three weeks now to get a good idea of it. Scroll wheel is responsive, but does not have left to right, only up and down and a center click. But you might be wondering, how do all of these buttons sound? Well, let's take a listen to that right now. As you heard, it is remarkably quiet. So if you're in an office setting, this could be ideal for you if you're in a shared workspace and you don't wanna annoy your neighbors with a lot of clicking. If we come to the front of the device, right there, you can kinda see there is a USB-C charging port. And that's because, as I mentioned, this is a wireless mouse, so there's a battery inside. Charge time takes about two hours to fully get it charged up. And with that two hour charge time, I have been able to get roughly a week's worth of everyday office use with this mouse. Now to me, I wish, again, that was a little better, but all things considered, that is not terrible for two hours worth of charging. One of the biggest things for me was the fact that it was an ergonomical vertical mouse. I've never used as this style of mouse before. And I will admit, after I got used to the initial change of my hand position, my arm felt much better after using this because the way that my office is situated, it's horribly designed. And if I use a mouse like I normally would, I kind of push my arm out and elbow and this position feels a little weird. However, with this, my arm is more vertical. It brought my shoulder and elbow closer to my body and that actually made it so that my arm wouldn't hurt at the end of the day because I've had issues with that in the past. While I will admit, the design shape, if you're not used to something like this, might be a little off-putting. I will admit the ProtoArc EM11 RGB wireless ergonomic vertical mouse surprised me a lot. Like, this is now going to be my everyday office mouse. Like, I'm not giving this up. This, uh, even after my testing period, this is still going to be my everyday go-to mouse. And it could be for you. Now, I kept alluding at the price point. The price for this is $30 currently as time of filming. You're not going to find another mouse like this at that price point. And realistically, if you're used to other mice vendors, you know who I'm talking about, you're not gonna touch a mouse at that price point. So if you're in the market for a vertical ergonomic style mouse, again, only right hand oriented, sadly, but 
it is the way it is, then I highly recommend checking out the ProtoArc EM11 RGB wireless ergonomic vertical mouse to help take some of the strain of your everyday mousing off your hand and arm. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.